I'm Derek Parra. I'm a five foot four Mexican American from Southern California. Now, those are just three reasons it didn't add up for me to have ever become winter Olympic champion. But somehow, from inside a roller rink as a teenager, a dream grew within my heart that someday, maybe, I could represent my country at the Olympic Games. And I chased that dream for over 20 years. And eventually, it led me to Salt Lake City. With great effort and the help of some amazing people along the way, I had become one of the top speed skaters in the world, and the finish line was in sight. But as the Olympics appeared on the horizon, that dream was almost derailed. The Olympics were mired in scandal and budget deficit, and even worse, the national tragedy of September 11th that shook our entire nation to its very core. It was a time of uncertainty, but in my Olympic world, Mitt Romney was at the helm. His vision and commitment got the games back on track and gave me the opportunity to realize my athletic dream. Not only did Mitt facilitate my dream in 2002, he facilitated the dreams of all athletes from around the world. At that time, I had only met Mitt briefly, but after the Olympics, I got to know him. And for a period of time, I lived with him and his family. I know Mitt, and I know him well. I know him as a businessman and as a leader. I know him as a father and as a very, very busy grandfather. And I'm proud to say that I know him as a friend. Now, you might think my greatest Olympic moment came when I stood on the podium for the first time with a gold medal wrapped around my neck. But you'd be wrong. In fact, the, my most powerful Olympic memory came before the Olympics even started. It's a story I've heard Mitt reference a number of times on the campaign trail. So I'd like to share with you firsthand what it was like for me. February 8, 2002, was a cold but clear night in Salt Lake City. It was the night of the opening ceremonies. I was competing the very next morning, so I was planning not to attend. But that all changed the, the second I got the call from the U.S. Olympic Committee, just hours before the ceremony, asking me if I would be able to be one of the eight athletes selected to carry the World Trade Center flag into the opening ceremonies. I was floored. Instantly, I knew it was something I had to do, something I wanted to do. It was an honor beyond anything I could have ever imagined. And while it's now just over 10 years later, at that time, our country was still reeling from the wounds, the trauma, and the pain of September 11th. As the opening ceremonies got underway, the other flag-bearing athletes and I gathered backstage. We were standing with the Port Authority officers, whose job it was to oversee the flag. They began telling us how proud they were of us, that the families of the victims were proud of us, that all the people who lost their lives were proud of us. When it came time to begin the procession, I touched the flag for the first time. And I remember a physical sensation unlike anything I had ever experienced. If it's possible, if it's possible to feel your soul being touched, then that's what I felt. As we carried the flag out before a capacity crowd and a worldwide television audience, the silence was deafening. That flag, which had flown over so much pain and loss, still stood for life, love, and the hope of a nation.
There are few times in any life when the emotion of a moment is all that exists. That night, time stood still. As our national anthem rang out like never before, I stood there holding that flag, the symbol of everything our country had ever been through, with tears streaming down my face. That moment came under the leadership of Mitt Romney. And it not only inspired me, but it inspired all of Team USA. We went on to, to win a record number of medals. Today, our country is struggling, but the right leaders can inspire us to push on, overcome seemingly insurmountable challenges, and to accomplish great things. Mitt Romney is that kind of leader. Thank you, and God bless.